This video demonstrates the installation of the six pack well. In effect, what we're doing here today is replacing this well that was installed back in 1984. It's only about 12 feet deep. It has served its purpose very well. One of the first steps in this process is to get a hold of a piece of six inch PVC pipe. Steel could be used, but PVC. I'm sure it's cheaper and quite easy to work with and very durable. It won't corrode. Okay, here we're doing the second step, uh, drilling the holes every about every six, eight inches and staggering the holes all the way around uh, to give plenty of places for the water to get in. And so he begins. prepared for a bloody big hole anywhere this hole is quite a bit bigger than it actually needs to be but it's the safest way to do this as we will expect some caving the object of dewatering is to help stabilize the soil dry soil won't cave the wet soil will just slough off done enough of these to know that it can be a real hazard. We're beginning to get down into wet soil. Getting a little water yield in the middle of the hole here. Uh, it's possible we will hit a vein or two that will yield faster than this ground usually does. This is a very, very tight soil. See the stone coming out of the old well done in 84. And the pile grows. The old stone coming out of the original well. We're just about at that depth now. About 10 feet. I'm hoping we can get 15. delicate operation you're getting the old. Now he's got a good grip on that. And out it goes. Note that we use slots in the original casing using holes now. We got a pretty good pile of spoil developing here. And we had 15 feet to the water line and I think he'll be able to get another one out of there. It appears that we probably hit a practical depth, and I believe Greg has hit a boulder here also, and we're very close to where the target was, so we'll go with this depth and set our casing. Placing a little bedding stone to set the well casing on. We've got about 16 feet to water level there now. much caving yet doesn't mean the whole thing won't go at any second. So far so good. Here the casing has been set and pulled to a vertical position. Greg works right out of the back of the truck. Works very easily until it gets down to the end of the load and then we dump it over the side. Note the bucket on top of the casing to keep any stone from going down inside. The more stone we get in there, the more storage there'll be and the less chance of caving. Figure that. That wheel and load of stone should give me about a thousand gallons of storage. Yeah, we use the uh, fabric that's going over the stone as a uh, as a protector for the edge of the ditch. 
this so that when we dump, it doesn't carry too much material. Now this will get leveled off and this filter fabric will go on top of the stone. Okay, fabric is in place, tucked nicely against the edges all the way around. And the next thing is a, a few yards of sand to go over the top of this that will help strain any water that goes down through. It also becomes part of the aquifer because it's more porous. Than... We've covered the filter fabric, the geotextile, it's actually road fabric in this case is what we used, um, with a layer of coarse sand and a layer of fine sand to protect it. And now the original material is going back in the hole. And now it's backfill and cleanup time, the slow part of the job. This is part of the hassle of finishing up. That, that material that came out is pretty, still pretty sloppy wet, so you just have to put it in place and let it drain. Some of it has to be hauled away uh, because We put in about 15 yards of stone, so that's about 15 yards of material that's going to go someplace else. And what I'm having Greg do now is put all that wet spoil right on top of the hole, let it dry out for a few days, because uh, what's below it is pretty wet anyway, so this will just have to sit here and dry. It might take a week. The other thing that I'm trying to do, if the pump would keep running, is to develop the well now uh, as soon as it's as soon as we backfilled enough to be able to get at it and uh, unfortunately the pump is giving a little trouble uh, but we're pumping about 50 gallons a minute and this has been running for 15 minutes half an hour there's a lot of water in the well um, trying to develop it get all the silt out of it before it's suspended in the water and I, I shake the uh, uh, I shake the foot valve so it loosens up everything in the bottom, and you can see it coming out the outlet. It's uh, pretty, pretty silty sandy. I've included a few clips from another well replacement in order to help clarify some of the fine points of how we do this well installation. We're making a little bit of an attempt here to uh, save what topsoil there is to go back on top. It's a close-up of the uh, line where it did come in, how the roots have followed this down in making it somewhat less than appealing for uh, domestic water use. Okay, this is the process of uh, tying off the three points. Uh, yeah, it's... Now we're adding stone. After the casing has been plumbed, you see the holes in the casing. Adding the second load of stone now, up above the, uh, the holes, adding more and more storage, which is what this uh, homeowner wanted, because the original well had very, very little storage and they would run out of water. They shouldn't anymore. Each load of stone should be about a thousand gallons, so there's two, load, two wheeler loads in here for about 25 yards, so that should give them almost 2,000 gallons of water in storage the water to the top of the stone. Here the offset to the house has been installed, but it's been installed with a bit of a crown so that if and when, which usually happens, the soil settles, it will not have the tendency to pull it down or away or tip the uh, pitless adapter so that it's difficult to get the pitless tool onto it. And it's backfill time. This is my own well after it was completed. The well is the white pipe with the green cap on top. There is a three-quarter horsepower submersible pump in the well that feeds us an expansion tank that's under the black barrel for summer only operation. For the winter, that expansion tank is removed and this setup is used to be able to flood the rink and when the power is shut off, water drains back through the pump into the well.